Now that we've created our initial tracks in our song, lead, accompaniment, bass, and rhythm, we want to start to talk about song form and how to build this song over time. What we've done in this song when we previously started was we built what we're going to call the chorus of our song or the main dominant part of the song. And we made sure in that chorus that all these parts could fit together well in that chorus. Now we want to create the other parts to the song. And we're going to do that by creating sections. And these sections are going to happen every 16 bars. Okay, you can do that in Logic by opening the marker track by clicking on the global tracks view right here. And we're going to insert markers every 17 bars. Now to do that, we want to, we want to use the pencil tool. So we have these two icons up here. If you don't see two icons, you have to go to Logic Pro Preferences, Advanced Tools, and you have to make sure that all these advanced tools are on. So make sure to do that. Come back here. Now on the right one, we're going to pick Pencil Tool. And then when we hold down the Command key, we get a pencil there. You see that pencil? I'm going to click once on Measure 1, and then I'm going to let go of the Command Tool, and I'm going to double click it, and I'm going to name it Verse. I'm going to come to measure 17. I'm going to hold down the command tool so I get the pencil. And I'm going to click right at 17. And then I'm going to let go of the command tool, double click it, and call it chorus. I'm going to go to 33, pencil tool, no pencil tool, double click it, verse. And you should see very clearly that we're going to build the sections of our song. 33, 49, you'll start to actually remember these numbers because we're going to use them so much in this class. 65 is what we're going to call we're going to double click that. We're going to call that the bridge. It's the one part of the song that's going to be different than the other parts. And then we're going to come back at 81 and we're going to call that chorus. So what we're going to do is we're going to build an A, B, A, B, C, B song. If I zoom out now, you'll see that my song has verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, every 16 bars starting from measure one. So you start at measure one, you add 16, you get 17. Add 16, you get 33. Add 16, you get 49. This is how your song should look. I'm going to close the global view now so I don't mess those up. And you can still see the markers up there. You got those? Okay, so whatever DAW you're using, make sure that you're showing these markers. One of the things we're going to try to do in this class is really understand how to make distinction. If we have all four of these parts playing at once, then a way to make it sound different is to not play all those four parts here. We don't want to just go find a whole bunch of other loops and have two different songs. We want these to sound like the same song. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick and choose these parts. We're going to make it real easy. What you're going to do is you're going to come over here and you're going to introduce a new part every four measures. So I'm going to introduce a loop at one, five, nine, and then something is going to happen at 13. You could pick any one of these loops, but I'm going to tell you, don't start with your lead. Start with your rhythm, your bass, your accompaniment part. So we're going to build our verse. I'm going to go ahead and cycle through one through 17 here, and we're going to start with these three parts down here. And you can start in any order you want. You can go drums first, you can go bass first, or you can go accompaniment first. And then we're going to introduce the other two parts every four bars. I can just show you how that's going to look. If we were to do drums first, it would look like this. And we can listen to that. We could start with the bass first, and then we could add the drums, and then the accompaniment. Feel the song building. Or we could start with the accompaniment first, right? And add some of the other ones. So I'm going to accompaniment, drums, then bass. I didn't like that one as much. I thought the bass sounded a little weird when it came in. So I'm going to try going in this order, mainly because I haven't done it in a long time. We're going to go bass, add the accompaniment, add the rhythm part. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead and duplicate all those for these next four bars from 13 to 17. But 13 and 17 is what's going to be called the build of the song. And I want them to be driving into the start of my chorus at 17, right? So I need to do something a little bit different in this area. We're going to start by doing something really easy, which is we're going to add another track. We're going to add another ad audio track. And we're going to drag it down in the bottom here. We're going to call this effects, FX, like this, okay? And we're going to make use of a thing called a riser. So if you go into your loops and you type in the word riser, you should hear plenty of these riser sort of sound. You hear it? And we want that riser sound to play from 13 to 17. So I'm going to drag that down, start it at 13, and you'll see that I happen to pick one that was the right length, went from 13 to 17. Now I'm going to play through this song, and you should hear some sort of build here, and then the lead part is going to come into the chorus. Let's listen to it. lead part comes in and my song is going. This is the great start. We got the basic bare bones of our song going. Now we need to start to make it a little more interesting as we transition from our verse to our chorus. We need to make these th two things sound different. If something is playing the same on the left and the right of major 17, it's going to make them not sound different. If it's something different between those two, it's going to make them sound different. So the fact that we are stopping this riser at 17 and starting our lead here makes a difference between the verse and the chorus, but it's the only difference. Everything else st stays the same. If we're going to have all the sounds playing here, it would make sense to not have all the sounds playing, or at least have them playing something different right before that. There's a couple different easy things we can do there. One is, let's just try trimming, shortening some of the notes here. So we're going to grab the bottom right of our loop here. We're going to pull it back. Let's pull it back halfway through 16, okay? Let's just try just, just the rhythm track first. And so I'm going to loop from 15 to 19, and we'll hear this transition. So what we're working on is the transition between the verse and the chorus. Okay, and that bass sounded like it was going a little too much, so I'm going to go ahead and drag that bass back too. Okay. Okay, and you'll hear that the more I do here, the more I cut out, the more I change this, the more dramatic this movement will be. And this movement from your verse to your chorus is the most important movement in your whole song. This is what's going to hold the listener. You have to deliver something interesting right here or they stop listening. Over and over in this class, I hear people create very interesting tracks all the way up to measure 17. And then at measure 17, we get disappointed because this transition is not effective enough. So it is hard to overstate the importance of the build, the section from 13 to 17, and how much impact it has on the listener. Right now, we've added two techniques to the build. We've added a riser and we've put in some gaps. I could probably even put in more of a gap. Let me see what happens if I do that. Okay, I could actually pull out all the instruments there, right? If I want to make it more dramatic, I can start editing these loops even more. Let's take a look at what that would look like. Okay, so I'm going to edit loops by coming in. I'm going to zoom into them. If you remember earlier, I hold down the Option key and click on any background area. I can rubber band around the area I want to zoom into. I'm going to go ahead and just start to mess with the drum loop a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and... If you click on the right tool here and you turn it to a scissor tool, you can chop up that loop a little bit. I'm going to chop it right on these lines here so it's nice and clear. And I'm going to take the snare out. So if we listen to that right here, just this little section you'll hear is kick and snare, right? I'm going to take the snare out by just deleting it and I'm going to option drag or copy the kick over. Hear that? Hear the kick sound? Now it's got a little click at the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and move that just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and do that three times right there. I'm going to have three of those kicks going in. Let's see if we can hear that. 
So now what I've done is just put three kicks in a row, right? I edited out the snare from the kick loop, so it sounds more like this now, so going into the transition. And maybe I want to take that hi-hat. You can see the hi-hat right there. I could take this and cut it back. And maybe I want a bunch more of those kicks there. So one of the things I can do now is I could maybe shorten that kick there and I can drag it back, copy back. Now I'm making sure that I'm staying right on my grid marks. And maybe I want to now take this bass note and I'm going to drag it, I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna move it back to the start of that note. Okay, so where I've kind of ended up now is I've chopped little pieces of these loops up and made them a little bit more repetitive and then cut them out, okay? So when you make something more repetitive, you're going to be building tension by pushing the cycle forward more. It's going to feel like something's happening faster. Even though the song's moving at the same tempo, the information is coming by faster. And then when you cut something out, there's a big gap there. There's tension or suspension from the fact that, that something's dropped and you're expecting something to come back in. Okay, so I've used both these techniques in this build section here, along with the riser. Let's hear it how it sounds. Let's come back from uh, measure 10 and we'll listen through just to the introduction of my chorus here. Can you feel that? Could you feel how when this kicked in, it creates a sense of release, right? I did that by making things more repetitive, having the riser that's building up in frequencies and then removing a lot of the track, the notes right there. This is a very common way to do it. You probably have listened to a lot of other music and you may have tech, different techniques, but what I'd like you to do between 13 and 17 is have some sort of transition between your verse and your chorus that leads to a satisfying resolution when you start your chorus. Usually the hardest part is people introduce too much information up front here and then we just don't have enough to work with here and we get to our chorus and it's underwhelming. Well, you could add more in your chorus, but rather than do that, what I'd like you to do is put less in your verse, have more space in your verse. What does that look like? Well, let's, let's go back and listen to so. Like right there, we could take out some of those bass notes so it's not playing as often right there, right? So I'm just gonna cut out those last four at the end of measure two, and I'm gonna do the same thing here at the end of measure four. I'm just gonna take out a few notes of the bass. Let's see how that sounds. So I can use that technique now. I'm like, well, let me not introduce the whole bass line until I get all the way in later into the song. So I'm gonna grab those two and I'm gonna keep my bass line very simple. Now I'm gonna to go to my company part and I'm gonna see if I can simplify that a little bit, okay? So as I look at this, I can see this big gap here in the bass and I can tell you that the accompaniment's gonna sound really good there. Well, if I'm playing at the end of measure six, why don't I play at the end of measure five too? So let me try taking out the accompaniment part right here. Now it might be a little too much, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that note in. And I think I'm gonna to have to put the first note of the accompaniment in, so I'm gonna leave just like that. Let's see how that works. Okay, so what I've done with the accompaniment part is had it playing mainly when the bass isn't and then kind of repeating that cycle. Let's see what happens here. So if we go from the start. Okay, and we're ready for the drums to come in then. Okay, same with the drums. I don't want to give away all my drums beforehand here, and I know I have kick, snare, and hi-hat to work with, right? So why don't I just take out, probably, it's a little hard to take out the hi-hat. It's built in there with the kick. Let's see here. Let me just solo that. I'm just going to use that kick sound and keep repeating it. Okay, one of the things you may notice when you're working with your loops, especially the bass and the drums, is you end up with some pops and clicks. If you listen here, you'll hear one. You hear that little click at the end of this? What that means is that 
ideally when the waveform is right where it's crossing the line, you won't hear a click, but you still do on this one. So what you need to do on points like that, and here's another one, right, where the click starts, the next beat starts just before it, you see that? On loops like that, you have to put in a fade. What does that mean? Oh dear. It's a little complicated, but if I click on this loop right here, I come into the inspector window here by clicking the I, and I hit region, and go down to more, I can do a little fade out on that. And in Logic, you, you click to the right here and you drag this up, and you'll see that little line starting to create over there on the right. That is turning the volume down on that loop just before it ends. Now it's so small, when you zoom out, you can barely see it, but it gets rid of that click right there. You hear the click? That click went away, whereas if I have the fade out at zero, Okay, so we want to get rid of those clicks. Now, one of the things you can do in Logic is you can select all those regions and you can put a little fade out on them, maybe a five millisecond fade out. And that'll get rid of all those clicks. Like I said, you mainly hear it on your drums and your bass. And I'm going to go ahead on my bass and do the same thing. I just know it's going to need like a five millisecond fade out and probably the same with my accompaniment. I'll do the same. Okay, let's hear the song from the beginning now. Now, so what I've done in the drum part is I've gone in and I've removed pretty much the snare until I get here. So I'm going in and I'm editing. I can see the kick. I can see the little hi-hat there. On this kick, I took out the hi-hat. So listen right here, starting at nine. Oh, I put the snare. Okay, so I only have the snare playing like every other time, very slowly, right? It sounds like it's going slower. So I'm editing the loop, right? Okay, that's how I'm building tension in the drum part here, but not giving away everything that I'm going to do in the beginning of the song. So I'm getting pretty close here to, ha to finishing my verse to chorus maneuver. song isn't really even going, it's just doing enough to hold the listener's attention, right? So what I've got now is the uh, basics for my song. I've got a verse that's kind of chopped up. I've been using these loops, I've been creating some tension and build here, and I haven't been giving away the entire loop in the verse so that when it comes in the chorus, it sounds more satisfying. Then what I'd like you to do is go ahead and drag, copy all this information and you hold down the option key or you can hit copy, control, command C and you go to measure 33 and you're gonna paste this and now your song is gonna look like this. You're gonna have two, oh, I still have these old loops back here. Let me move those out of the way. Now I have four sections of my song done. I've got my verse, chorus, verse, chorus. It's very repetitive at this point. The course especially is going to get a little bit boring, but we're going to talk about how to fill that in next. So what I'd like you to do is take a screenshot of this, and this will show that you have your sections of your song. I should be able to see verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge starting at 65, and we're going to get into the bridge and how to hold interest in these sections next.